Hi, uh, this is 637. I'm Charles Bowman, and we're doing uh, actually a lecture uh, uh, to make up a, a lecture. Uh, so, and the, the material we're going to cover today is on digital imaging systems and digital cameras and digital lenses, uh, or not, well, analog lenses actually. But uh, so let's get right to it. Um, so, uh, um, of course, uh, the primary topic of this course is digital imaging. And, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the way uh, images are often captured are with uh, optical imaging systems and particularly cameras. So, uh, sort of the, the mainstay of, of uh, professional, professional photographers is what they call the, uh, the single lens reflex camera. These, these days it's called the digital single lens reflex camera, or DLSR. DSLR, I'm sorry, DSLR. So, uh, and uh, the way a, a DSLR works, I mean, there, uh, there's a number of manuf there's uh, quite a few manufacturers which make them. Two of the more prominent ones are uh, Nikon and uh, Canon, but there are many more. And here the, I'm showing a Nikon uh, uh, SLR because uh, actually uh, this is similar to one that I own. Um, so, the way it works is that uh, with, with an SLR, uh, the, the thing that distinguishes it is that when you look through the viewfinder, you're actually looking through the actual lens to see what the, the image uh, you're going to take a picture of looks like. I guess in some ways it's not as distinct as it used to be because with digital cameras, uh, imaging sensors are often used to actually relay the image to an LCD. So you're looking at the image from that perspective that you'd be taking a picture of, but in the days of analog film, of course, um, uh, you couldn't have uh, an LCD display because there wasn't a digital imaging sensor to catch, capture the image in real time. But with the DLSR, what happens is there's a mirror here that reflects the light up through a prism, and then the viewfinder, uh, uh, you, you view that light. So, so uh, the light passes into the camera, bounces off this mirror, passes up through some lenses, bounces through this prism, and then goes to the viewfinder to where your eye is. So you're, you're looking uh, here. Um, so that's your eye. So um, then when you go to take the picture, it's actually a, a very interesting piece of mechanical engineering because uh, what has to happen is, first of all, the shutter closes in the aperture in the lens. Then the, um, uh, this prism flips up. Okay, uh, to get out of the way to let the light in uh, to where the sensor is. Then, um, then the aperture opens up for the prescribed amount of time, exposes the light on the sensor, the, the, the sensor digitizes the incoming light, it's stored in uh, local memory in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the camera, and then the, the um, uh, mirror flips back down. And the, all this movement has a distinctive sound that it produces that I'm sure people are familiar with. In fact, they they add that sound digitally to inexpensive cameras to make people feel good. So when they push the button, they hear something. You know, it goes ch -ch -ch, sort of. A, well, that's not really what it sounds like. But in any case, um, these are pretty high-end cameras generally because the lens, lenses can be exchangeable. So you can... Um, uh, put on a lens that's optimized for your particular imaging scenario. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, a typical uh, camera these days, uh, I just looked at some uh, cameras, I mean, 12 megapixel camera that goes from 100 to 6400 ISO. It's, the actual camera body is about $1,500. And then, of course, you have to buy a lens flash and, uh, and digital media to go with that. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, in fact, it used to be that the main marketing point for these cameras was the number of pixels, uh, so the number of megapixels, but in fact, some of the more expensive cameras have fewer megapixels because they trade off megapixels for other things that are, might be desirable, like speed of the camera, uh, 